Thank you for joining us today on part two of our three-part series on um, creating your own videos and vid video. Um, this one is on creating your own video part two. And um, I'm Lisa Ginsberg, and we also have Anne-Marie Allen and Siobhan Young on from the BCAR staff. Um, and of course, we have our two esteemed speakers today, Javier Nichols, who is Jamar, if you're looking to, to message him privately, <laughs> that's what you're showing up as, and, and Liz uh, Kelly. Liz Gara Kelly. You go by Liz Gara. <laughs> Liz Gara. <laughs> Got confused when I saw it. Um, Anyway, just a couple of quick housekeeping announcements, and then I'm going to turn it over to them. Um, please keep yourselves on mute. Um, I see a whole lot of you are not on mute, and I don't want to have to really mute everyone because then the instructors have to mute themselves, unmute themselves. But so, and Javier, I think I just muted you by accident. That's okay. I'm very um, anyway, proficient no, with my good. Zoom okay. skills. So please mute yourself um, if you're not one of the instructors. And uh, please turn your camera on. We'd love to see you. Um, it really does make for a better presentation for, for everyone and especially for the speakers to be able to see a face. Um, we, are, we are recording this as we do with most of our uh, education Zoom programs and it will be sent out to you uh, most likely end of today, early tomorrow, along with this presentation. So feel free to share it with people in your office. Feel free to go listen to it, one, two, more, as many times as you need. It, it's there as a resource for you. Um, and um, if you do have questions for Liz or Javier, you can put them into the chat. And the chat box is at the bottom of the screen. Just click chat and then just put to everyone. And they're also going to take a few minutes at the end, like they did last week, for, for, for chat and let you unmute yourselves and, and speak. And that really was a great little um, extra thing at the end. So um, it's my pleasure to introduce Liz and Javier. I'm going to send it right over to you guys now. Thanks. Hello, everybody. We're very happy to have you guys back. Um, just to recap, my name is Liz. I am the Agent Services Manager at REMAX Center Realtors here in Jamison. Um, primarily what I do is all things tech for our agents here in the office and just be that support system for them here. And I love doing what I do. Absolutely. I am Javier Nichols. I am with the new member success committee. Wear many hats, but the most important hat is educating newer agents, getting them well acclimated to all the resources and most importantly how to make video which is why we're here so let's do a quick recap Liz what do you think yes yeah, so we just wanted to touch back on what we went over last time so we talked about things like camera shy tips we talked about our backgrounds the tools like ring lights and green screens and microphones to help us get through doing those videos and making them look professional Absolutely. Make sure you guys are going to BucksRealtor.com. As you can clearly see here, uh, make sure you have it on your, uh, you know, your bookmarks for your computer. It's very important to have access to everything that BCAR does because we have a lot of great tools and a lot of great resources for you to utilize and increase your business. And it looks really good. That's the new website, by the way, in the cell phone. So I'm letting y'all know. Check it out. By the way, we touched on some really key facts about creating and getting your preparation done for your video. So if you're just joining us for the first time or you're watching this for the first time, make sure you check out part one after. We don't want, we don't want you to leave now. So we're going to get right into it. Well, actually, let's give a, yeah, I guess we let's go to the next slide because that's to meet the speakers. And then we uh, start talking about what they're going to learn today. What are they going to learn today today, Liz? What do you think? So today we're diving deeper into this, and I know this is all the fun stuff you guys really want to know about, which is resources for editing your videos, voice inflection and tonality, the do's and don'ts of making videos, things to keep in mind, and different time limits for videos based off what platform you're using and focusing mainly on that grabbing attention in the very beginning of a video. Absolutely. And keep in mind, guys, make sure you are writing down some of these tips and resources that we're gonna to touch on today. It's very important for you to take action after you're watching this part two series of our video, how to create video, because here's the truth about this. You need more video content in your business. 
So why not try it for the first time or try it for the first time in a long while right after you're getting some great tips that we're going to lay on you today. So just keep that in mind. Action is something that we encourage and we would love to help you on the back end if you have any questions. You just send us your information or we can put our emails in the chat so we can do some follow up after this series. So we're going to dive right into resources. So we have a bunch of different resources for you guys to check out and I highly recommend you do. First, we're going to start with Creator Studios. Now, Creator Studio is more of a tool um, for uploading your videos. So I know we all are crazy. We all have busy schedules and time management and we're pulled in different directions all the time. So you can create these videos in your downtime and then put them into Creator Studios and schedule them to post. So based off things that are happening, things you're doing, make your pre-listing video and have it ready to go so that when you go live with your listing, that video is already posting and you're not even thinking about it. It also provides insights as to how many people have watched it, what kind of engagement you got, which is really good for you guys because you can go, okay, that video didn't get as much engagement as this type of video. So you can see exactly how you're doing with the content that you're putting out. Absolutely. And those insights are extremely important for you to continue going back and readjusting, as Liz just mentioned. But it also gives you an understanding of what people want to hear from you. Like, what do people like from you? Right. Understanding this will help you not only keep your confidence level, but give you a sense of direction of where your next post should be or where you should spend your most of your time when you're making videos. Um, and, the, and the next resource is CapCut. CapCut as you can see here is displayed here on the desktop. They have now uh, came out with a desktop version of CapCut. I personally use it on my phone. It is so easy. And they also have, how many people in here have seen those captions that look interactive where things are moving around with the caption? And it looks as though like somebody, somebody's spending some money on this caption right here, right? Somebody that did something on Fiverr and it's just, we can't create it. <laughs> CapCut allows you to do that. It gives you what's called dynamic captions, where it pops up on the screen and allows readers to follow, as once we all did back in elementary school when we were learning how to uh, speak, right? We were seeing a little word, Sesame Street, just saying. So, yeah, CapCut, good place. <laughs> you see CapCut a lot, and if you all scroll through TikTok, that's where it's really popular. So you'll see in the bottom, people are using CapCut. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen that logo for them many times before. But our next one is Instagram. Instagram, you have quite a few different options. With Instagram, you have stories, you have reels, and you have Instagram Live. So reels are 15 second clips all put together to create a bigger one. So you can do clips of different people, different aspects, and you can blend them all together to make one longer video. You can even share that to your story to get more. So stories, are just those quick one 15 second clip to give a teaser. That's what they're really good for. Give a teaser of a new listing, things like that. Um, they disappear after 24 hours. So if you don't wanna lose those stories that you have, you can actually put them into a highlight section. That highlight section will sit right on your Instagram main page and people can always go back and watch it so you don't lose that content. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, so it's a great tool to have. Instagram Live is you can do 60 minutes, just like a Zoom call. So you can give live aspects of things that you're doing a day in the life of a realtor, which we'll dive into in the third part of this series. But it's a great option to live engage with your clients because they get a notification that you are live on Instagram. So people see it, they want to know what you're doing. So they're all really great options to use within there. And I wanted to piggyback off of what you just said about stories. Stories is a really good way for you to stay top of mind with a lot of your followers, because once you put a new story up, your icon, excuse me, your logo, your avatar, whatever you have as far as your image on Instagram pops up and it lights up. This allows people to know like, oh, wow, she has or he has a new story. Let me go check it out. And if you really get creative with it, you can start putting call to actions in the story. Hey guys, I'm getting ready to do a, uh, you know, a live or I'm getting ready to jump into 
you know, a conference or whatever you're doing, click the link here to follow along or getting ready to do a walkthrough of a property, click the link here to get more details. And you're doing that in the story. So just to point out, the stories are a very important part of your Instagram brand. And, and to give just an going, example of that, yep. Harvard actually polled 50% of people who saw a call to action in a story went to that person's website. So it's a phenomenal source for lead generation. 50%. So 50% of the people who are looking at that are going to go to your website. So keep that in mind with your call to actions. Yes. And I'm going to add one last thing because stories, again, guys, stories on Instagram and Facebook, very important. When you're doing the stories, try to have fun with, um, and we're going to get into this in part three, but different content pieces like this or that. Like, uh, do you like granite countertops versus concrete countertops. You have an image of both, and then you can put a poll of which one do you like? And people are going to engage with that poll on your story. And then once you get really clever, you can make people select things that are indicating their interest of whether or not they're purchasing. So for example, you can have a, a duplex and a triplex. Where, where, you know, which would you rather? Or and, and they can choose one or the other. And now you know, okay, now you this person is giving you more details about themselves because you get to see who chose a particular answer or any answer. So you can use that for follow-up. And I definitely do them. If I scroll through those <laughs> stories and I see them, I definitely engage with them. So you, other people will. <laughs> so yeah, how many people here have done that? And I do it. <laughs> yeah, like how many people here has clicked on something in a story on Instagram as far as a poll? How many people in here? I would love to see either show of hands or go to the chat and just let us know. All right, we got some folks in here that has participated. And if you haven't, this is another thing for you to now recognize about yourself and your business. Engagement brings more engagement. The algorithm loves when you are engaging. So if you are not participating in someone else's story, now is the time to start doing so because it allows them to now participate in yours. Algorithm loves movement, just like. <laughs> All right, cool. So leave a video. We got somebody unmuted here. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or just raise your hand and we can uh, go right ahead and get you unmuted so we can dive right in. Um, the next one is Viva Video. Viva Video is very similar to CapCut. I use Viva Video personally. This is why I put it in here. It was one of the first resources I used to create video. So easy. They do have a pro where you can pay, and that just allows you some better movements and better cuts. I still prefer CapCut because it allows me to do much more because I'm more skilled. However, when you first start out, Viva Video could be and should be one of those resources you try out to see what works better. There's a lot of resources out there to create video. I just got put onto something called We Video this morning. A lot of our team members do it. I like it because it showcases cities and it gives you drone shots of cities. We were doing Phoenix, uh, I'm sorry, we were doing Jacksonville and we were doing Philadelphia and it literally gave us nice drone shots of the city that, that we can now do a voiceover and talk about products and programs and all that good stuff. So. Just, just be mindful. Uh, our next one is your favorite, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> so feeding off of, you know, being experienced or not experienced, Adobe Premiere is going to fit all of those categories. <clears throat> Whether you are just getting started or you are very experienced in video editing, Adobe is a great option for you. They have six main workspaces for assembly, editing, color, effects, and audio. So you have tons of options and it's a drag and drop system. So you find a graphic you like and you literally just drag it across your screen into your workspace and it's in your video. And then you just move it around to how you want. You can do audio mixing. So you can put ambient sound behind you. You can do voiceovers. You can put graphics in it. So it's a really great option. They actually have 4.5 stars for ease of use and 4.7 out of five for features. And they also have almost five stars for support. So their support is also phenomenal. They get back to you immediately. It's not like you send an email and wait. So they're really great. They also have different pricing options to fit whatever is working for you. You can 
okay, yearly, monthly, but it is a great option for first time video editing. Yeah, Adobe is what I call the real deal. And Adobe is going to be one of those that we get into that has a cost associated with it. Okay, there's a cost associated <clears throat> with Adobe. It's about $20, I believe, or 40 bucks a month. It's around there. Adobe Premiere Pro is going to, this is like, if you're, if you're getting into this, the beginning, it's better to have an app, one of these CapCuts, Viva Videos, Creative Studio, you know, Instagram allows you to edit, but CapCut is going to be what you want to go to. Adobe Premiere Pro is phenomenal, but it's more, it will, you will spend more time on YouTube watching how to's for Adobe Premiere Pro when you first start. I first started with Adobe Premiere Pro and that's where I got my green screen. I started with my trainings and I realized I spent a lot more time watching others use it so I can understand it than using it myself and trying to do it because it is so uh, it's just a real deal. I mean, it's literally one of those, per, it's one of those programs that if you are paying for a videographer to edit, most likely they're using Adobe Premiere Pro to edit. So if you are like most agents, doers, like we all are, okay, you want to learn the process. You want to learn how the sausage is made. So this is Adobe Premiere Pro and it allow you an insight of how to create that really high end, you know, the videos once you get acclimated to using it, of course. And what's our last but not least? And this is something yeah, that everybody uh, should both know. Of our favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I live and breathe Tampa. <laughs> so, so, Liz, I mean, you want to give us a little touch on that? I mean, I use Canva on a daily basis. It is where everything I create lives, from presentations <laughs> like this one you're looking at now to putting videos in and creating presentations with the video embedded into it. Canva, if you're going to put money out for something, Canva Pro is 100% worth it. And it is probably the most user-friendly thing that I've ever used when it comes to marketing. So it's very, very phenomenal. And I know Javier absolutely loves oh. Canva as well. <laughs> Listen, guys, I, re I recently, about eight months ago, I got my Canva certificate of a thousand creations. And I felt like I was happy. I put it up. I was showing family mm -hmm. members, letting them know how much I've you know, use this resource. And I want everybody to write this down. Everything on this screen here, write it down. But Canva is going to be the mothership of everything content. Literally, they now have an AI where you can type in, write five tips of new time, you know, first time home buyers. And it's going to spit out five tips. And we're teaching our agents now to take those five tips and convert them into reels, convert them into emails, blog posts. It's so much you can do in Canva. So, the, this is one of those moments where you're like, okay, if I haven't done it, let me now download it and then switch it on your phone. So many of us on this call and in this generation in society, we are constantly on social media, constantly, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. Once you open your phone and track these things, by the way, right? See, how many times do you grab your phone and go to a social media when you're in the middle of a break or you have time to kill? It's so rapid that you don't even know how many times you do it. So here's the trick. Take that icon of that social media app that you so frequently use, switch it with Canva. So every time you have the itch, you're going to open up your phone and your phone, your finger, your thumb is going to do all the work. It's like idle hands. It knows what it's doing. It knows what you want. And you're going to click and it's going to go to Canva. That's your trigger to make content. Don't care what it is. Make content. This is how I help rewire your brain and trust me your brain will fix itself and it will find the app and you will be back in that same rotation but keep changing up your position of that app until you feel confident and make sure you guys are putting time limits on your social media apps so you do not run over and you are aware of it because we do get lost in the sauce it's called yeah, doom also with canva i think the biggest thing that i love about canva is you could have your video and that's great but you don't know exactly how to put it into something Canva has thousands and thousands of different templates as the base of your presentation. And you can edit every single aspect of that template and make it yours. So it can give you that base of like, this is the look I'm going for with your branding. So you can take that look and make it yours. It's very, very easy to use. And that is a big part of it. You know, it takes some of that life work out <laughs> for you. 
is so smooth. Guys, listen, if you're looking to take a piece of this and run with it and earn some business in the next week, Canva is the trick, period. All right. Assume nothing, verify everything on that. Let's yeah, move on. This is amazing. Up. They have it set up where like the Instagram sizing, the Facebook sizing, it's already built in there. So you don't have to worry about making sure it's going to fit in that Instagram slide because their sizing is different. Canva does it for you. So definitely, definitely, definitely put Canva on your top list. I would get a Canva tattoo if, <laughs> if, if I was. <laughs> I would. I would. If I had some stock, it's not, it's not publicly traded, but right. maybe comes. <laughs> Walking you know, advertisements I'm, for them. Yes. Right on my back of my head. This is a big C. All right. So let's talk about some tips for these amazing resources yes. that we have. Um, captions. So why are captions important? Um, it's the ability to make your video more accessible. There is people who can't have their volume up. There's people who are hard of hearing, things like that. So having those captions, you're expanding your view, your viewers, how many people are looking at that. You're making it accessible to everyone, not just one group. So that's a big thing for me with captions is making sure that it's available for everyone to watch, no matter what circumstance they're in. And a lot of people do not watch video with volume on. They just don't. They just scroll through and they look at captions and keep moving. We are in the convenience part of our society. If it's not value or if it's not entertaining, we're going right past it. So captions is like that, you know, capture. Like you're capturing their attention by them reading what you're talking about. And especially if you have a hook, which we're going to go into later. But if you have a hook for that first three seconds, that caption is going to catch, it's going to catch them. They're going to watch it. They're going to click on your profile. They're going to start scrolling back. And then we're going to get into that a little bit later about your social resume. But branding, why is branding important? Well, what is branding? Branding is how you're portraying your personality into your business. It's saying who you are as a person. I know that can get confusing. of like, how do I turn my personality into content? But that is what our branding is. It is us. It's who we are, what we want to put out there, what kind of clients we want to bring in. All of that. So it's super, super important to know what your branding is, your logo. You can make logos in Canva, by the way. They have a whole logo template. <laughs> so you can easily create a <laughs> logo for yourself. So branding is probably the biggest thing that you should be doing before you start <laughs> making videos, having that logo, your call to actions, and making sure Correct. that you're putting them in every video and all the content that you're putting out. Absolutely. And one of the major pieces of branding that we all must keep in mind is more of a legal thing or a brokerage thing is your brokerage logo. A lot of us miss that memo. And oftentimes we will find a nice, beautiful uh, fine in our uh, inboxes or our mail. And that's not fun. There have been a big rise. Oh, by the way, today, Killing in Real Estate just came out and they are talking about the power of making sure you're having the right branding, brokerage branding in <clears throat> your social media post because people are cracking down on that. And it's something that we got to keep in mind. So make sure you guys shout out to Killing It in Real Estate. It's our official B Car podcast. Make sure you guys are checking it out. And Siobhan puts it in the chat like that. That's amazing. <laughs> so you guys make sure if you have not listened to Killing It in Real Estate, this is like do it. Just do it. Trust me. And especially season two starting off with a bang. But branding is very important. Canva allows you to pull away from the background. You can actually remove the backgrounds very easily. So as you can clearly see, uh, when we made this presentation, Bucks County Association of Realtors, of course, it had a background on it. Press the button, took it out, put it on our post. Same thing you're going to do with your Instagram post. Uh, whatever brokerage you're from, have your broker send you a transparent logo. So make sure you write this down. Send me a transparent logo. When they send you a transparent logo, the background is removed. However, and this is for those of you who do not have Canva Pro. If you don't have Canva Pro, you need that transparent logo so then you can start using it in your post. If you have Canva Pro, any logo will suffice. Just go ahead and remove background and boom, you have your transparent logo as you can see at the bottom left of our presentation. 
Yeah, it's literally just a button. It says background remover. It's that simple. <laughs> so. Good for headshots too. It's really yeah. good for headshots. And you guys can make cool different um, gestures in your headshots, <laughs> right? You could do your arms like this, you could do whatever, and then just remove the background and put something in the middle. Uh, a lot of you have seen people utilize these different gestures in their advertisements and they just look good. So just keep that in mind. All right, Javier, audio. Uh, audio is, this is very important, okay? Uh, I want everyone to write this down. Who in here has a creator profile for Instagram? Just put it in the chat. You can even put it in the chat. I don't even know what that is because I want to know how many people here has a creator profile on Instagram. I love the I don't knows because that's why we're here. Like literally part two is officially in the building. Okay, creator, stu cr creator studio, of course. Creator profile allows you to use really cool, trendy audio. All right, so what you do is not now, but after you're finished, go into your Instagram, go to your profile, go to your settings, scroll all the way down to account. Click that account and it's going to say switch to creator or switch to professional. You want to switch to creator. It's not going to change anything. It's just identifying you as a creator. And being a creator, you now have access to all the trendy audio. Audio is, okay. Go to Instagram and click your settings. Scroll all the way down to account. Click account. And it's going to say switch account. If you already are a creator account, it won't have creator as an option. If you're not, it's going to have creator as an option. If it does, change it. This will give you access to all the audio that you know and love or that trendy. And make sure when you're posting and using audio, it is not overpowering. Okay. And uh, have some fun with it. Have some fun with it. Audio is awesome. Hashtags. Hashtag. What's that going on? Yes. So I know it seems silly, but hashtags do play a very important role when we are putting out content. They're important because they enable your content to be found by the right people. So when we're using hashtag Bucks County Realtor, you're going to see how many people post within that hashtag. Now, coming up with the hashtags can be a little bit more difficult, but um, one of the girls in our office found this one. It's besthashtags.com. So you can put in one keyword and it will give you a whole list of hashtags that you can use for what you're looking for. So if you did a just listed, you put just listed and a bunch of hashtags will come up for it. And always make sure you're hashtagging your own office so that your office is getting more engagement as well. Um, they're phenomenal things. I know it seems silly. I know it does. People are like, where do these hashtags go? But they are important in getting the right people who you want to see your content to see your content. It boosts your views, your shares, all of it. So they're definitely, definitely a good thing to use. So besthashtags.com. I love that. That's a website. Hey, yeah. I never <laughs> checked that out. So I'm definitely writing that down. And checking that out. And for those of you who were uh, in attendance at our Education Palooza, shout out to B Car for always putting together some great events. During that Education Palooza, I myself personally held a Instagram discussion and giving you some different types of suggestions and truly ways to dominate using hashtags. So make sure you guys are writing this down. You're going to do hashtag your community, your town, your neighborhood, then the word realtor. And then you're going to do hashtag, same thing, community, town, neighborhood, whatever you want to start to dominate, the more refined, the better, especially if it's a neighborhood. I live in Levittown. So if I wanted to dominate for Cynthia Gate, I would <clears throat> write for Cynthia Gate realtor, for Cynthia Gate, uh, for Cynthia Gate real estate, for Cynthia Gate real estate agent. These are now hashtags that I am going to use consistently on all of my photos, my videos. So therefore, what I'm doing now and, you know, pairing that with what Liz said, as far as using hashtags to be a brokerage of the home, of the address, 
you're now placing all of your stuff under a tab so people can look it up, right? Let's just say how easy would it be if you like, how can I find you? Well, just go on Instagram and type in hashtag for Cynthia Gate Realtor. And now they see all of your stuff. Very simple, very easy. But that's a whole nother bag of wax So how you can use hashtags because we use them on targeting new clients. We use them on targeting areas that we want to dominate. So hashtags are very, very important. And the algorithm, hashtags work on Facebook as well because Facebook owns the Instagram. So, and it also works on LinkedIn. YouTube has hashtags, but Instagram is truly, and TikTok is going to be the places for hashtags where they're really pushed. Right. If you're using relevant current hashtags that are popular and you see a lot of engagement with it, you're going to pop up on someone's feed higher on the level than you would if you used other hashtags or didn't use hashtags at all. So it is actually putting you in the forefront of people's pages and their feeds by using them because they watch stuff that relates to that hashtag. So it's going to bring it to them because they like that content. So definitely use your hashtags in all the content that you're putting out, not even just video. Precisely. And you can actually follow hashtags but we'll get into that on part three on how you can actually educate yourself on a particular area. But uh, some good stuff so far, Liz. What you think? Yeah. Damn. Oh, very, very Damn. Good. If you guys I'm having some fun here. here. Doing videos. That's what I'm very excited for at the end of this, that I want to know that you guys went and did a video, whether you showed it to anybody or not, that you tried it. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm talking about. If you're getting some value, just put... I'm getting value or a fire emoji or something in the chat so we know that you are enjoying what you're hearing so far. Or you're clicking backwards. You got to go to the front. Yeah. All righty. So knowing your numbers. This is something that we need to pay attention to. Remember, guys, it does not matter what you are putting out there if it is not grabbing attention. Doesn't matter. OK, so it is essential for you to understand that the first 15 to 20 seconds, let's say on a YouTube or Facebook video. Right. That's where you want to. That's where we have found that studies are showing that people attention is dropping off at that time. But for Instagram and TikTok and all of those new up and coming social media platforms, the first three seconds. I know it sounds very small is <laughs> pretty much where you want to grab their attention. And that means taking advantage of some of our don'ts and do's, do's and don'ts. What's your take on that, Liz, on your first three seconds? Are they that crudal, uh, crucial? Absolutely. I, I, I am guilty of it myself. If a video does not grab me, I, I keep scrolling. <laughs> if it's not something that I'm immediately like, oh, what are they going to talk about? That's why you have that hook in the beginning of your video that brings that attention and awareness to it. But if someone's just like, hi, I'm so-and-so, you're, you're, you're probably gonna scroll through it. So it's about creating that content that's gonna be like, bam, in your face, attention grabbing. And you only have that small window to do it, but you can, it's much easier said than done. <laughs> yeah, and keep in mind guys, when we're saying that first three seconds, we're talking about something along the lines of, hey, did you know, or are you looking to buy a house or, great news or breaking news, anything that has some kind of a hook, right? These things will allow people to continuously view that video because they are waiting for that gem, whatever you're getting ready to drop. And we're gonna go more into that as we progress through our presentation, but just make sure that that grabbing of that first three seconds is just you giving a preview of what you're gonna talk about. Did you know you can buy your rate down, right? People are going to be like, oh, I didn't. Let me keep watching this. And this is the same thing when you are making carousels, right? That first carousel, four tips to creating content using camera. Okay, swipe left. I want to learn more. Four ways to save taxes. Great. I want to <clears> learn more. Did you know you could buy a house with just $10,000 down? Or you can, but like, there's different hooks you can use in the beginning to get people to continue watching. So just make sure you remember that you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. It's more or less of letting them see a preview of what you're getting ready to let them know. 
All right, so this video here talks, we're gonna showcase, and don't mind my hair, by the way, we're gonna showcase tonality and voice inflection, okay? You need to remember to always have fun when you're making your video. As much as we're making it seem like so big of a task, so much work, oh my God, I just gotta now just make video. No, have fun, be personable. Just like Liz was mentioning earlier, you wanna make sure that people see you as a real person. So this is one of the videos I made uh, during the pandemic. And it was really cool because I had long hair and I thought it was fun and check it out. So let's press play. You guys hear about, hold on, man, hold on. All right, so that's way better. So listen, did you guys hear about the down payment assistance programs that are available right now? HUD has just extended their $100 down payment program and we also have the K-Fit program, which allows you 5% of the purchase price. Now be competitive. Contact me today so you can see how you qualify. Okay, so in that video, did anybody notice any change in my voice when I was emphasizing the programs that were being advertised? Right? That's the voice inflection and tonality shifts I want you to embody in your videos. Now, of course, we sped that video up, so you didn't hear a lot of it, but there was a call to action, get qualified today. There were no captions, because again, this was, I am continue, continuously growing as you are as an agent. So captions were, I wasn't caring about captions when I made this video. <laughs> However, Instagram allows you to add them in naturally, so I'm sure I did, but the point what I'm making is, $100 down program. How many people want to know if they can buy a house for $100 down? Lots. Everybody. Okay. And that's a program that's still running. If I'm not mistaken, go to the hudhomestore.gov and check it out for Philadelphia, particularly in that area, in that community, Pennsylvania. And also the KFIT program. That was a lender's document that I projected on the screen, which you can easily get from any of your lenders. Find out. Some of them have programs that are tremendous. You may not qualify depending on your financial <clears throat> or, or your background, but it's being projected out there. So use that to your advantage to get people to contact you so you can find out if they qualify or not. And with tone, you want to strike an emotional chord with someone. Your attitude in your video is how you feel about the subject. It's your feelings about that subject. So if you're not promoting it and hype about it and in like how Javier is, he talked about, he knows it. Everyone knows he's the person to go to for it and that he believes in whatever it is he's promoting. So you want to strike that emotional chord with people. You want your attitude about what you're pushing to be a positive, fun experience for everybody who's watching it back. Absolutely. You gotta be convinced about what you're saying and add into that the takeaway from the hair, right? That was like, yo, what? My man got an afro, and then all of a sudden it's clean cut. You can do that. You can literally be in, in your regular clothes, getting ready to do a video, and then put your hand up, and then bring it back while you're inside of the house. Oh, that's better. Let me walk you through this beautiful house, right? Did you know you could buy a house for $100 down? You know what? Boom. Let me show you the house you can buy for $100 down. I'm inside 123 Banana Road, hudhomestore.gov. This house you can buy for $100 down. Let's go. Right? So you go from one sense to another and then boom. So and those transitions, really... people love those. When you put your <laughs> hand up in front of the camera and you bring it back and it's a completely different scene. People <laughs> love that. <laughs> so I thought it was really cool. a way to get to interact with people. Yeah, it felt they good. They want to know what's you know? coming. They want to know why you're covering it and what you're coming back as. So they're exactly. a really fun thing to do with your videos. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Shout out to the fro. I got to bring that back. All right. So the don'ts and the do's. So there's definitely things to keep in mind when you are creating video. And first, we're going to start with some of the don'ts. Um, Javier, we don't leave fillers. Yes. Fillers. Guys, the fillers are going to be that breath before you start talking. Hey, my name is Javier with ba da ba da ba da ba da ba Like that, that, that one breath is wasted time. Because if I'm watching your video and I hear you take a breath, I'm already not interested. 
right? Or if you're going in where at the interview video, right? And we're going to say, I'm jumping a little bit, but we're going to do the introduction, but closing the loop. Like, I don't want to see you turn your phone off after the video. Like, I wanted to cut, right? Intros, Liz. Well, to go back to what you were saying, something that I did myself to help me with my videos was I would start it ahead of time, maybe take that three seconds to collect myself, get my thoughts <laughs> ready to go. So I didn't have that. And then even at the end, no one wants to see you, like you said, turning your phone off. So you can put that into CapCut and cut those little pieces out and you don't even have to worry about them. So I always gave myself a little extra time in the beginning and a little extra time at the end so that I can bring it in together and it's a seamless video and transition into it. Absolutely. And keep in mind, you, you want to start your video the middle of your sentence, the middle of your word, the beginning, like right at that cuss as you're speaking. Like majority of my videos now, it starts with you, right? You should join our boom, boom, boom. You should be doing boom, 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 right? I'm doing this just to hit you. I want you to go back to those older days where you were up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. You got that guy selling whatever product or that gal selling it right now. Like, you need this, this. Bomb, bomb video is definitely a nice service. Um, I like it for emails, but it's not, you know, Again, Bomb Bomb gives you that preview where it shows like something's happening and like a little thumbnail, and then you can click it and you see it. So remember the intros, no one wants to hear you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Javier with so and so. Don't care. I'm already on your page. I know who you are. I need to know value, right? So don't do the introductions. For those of you thinking like you're writing down your script, my name is Blankety Blank from Blankety Blank Brokerage. Yeah, that's wasted time. Remember, people want fast food. They need it quick. They don't want to hear who you are. They want to know what you got for them. Remember, what's in it for me? But let's go into more of the looking at yourself. Why should I not stare at myself while I'm making videos? Because you're trying to engage with somebody else. So looking at yourself, the video doesn't feel as genuine. <laughs> you know, you're talking to yourself. You don't want to talk to yourself. You want to talk to your audience. I know you see me <laughs> looking around sometimes right now because I'm looking at a bunch of different things. But here I am looking right at my webcam. I can't see myself. I'm directly talking to you. And you want to make sure you're doing that, which goes back to my googly eyes on your webcam. Focus on the googly eyes, not you on the screen. <laughs> yes. Use that to your advantage. It's very important. And it helps you not to feel self-conscious while you're making video, because most of us hate looking at ourselves while making video. I remember our last part one, I'm going through it, listening to myself, and I'm like, ah. And I hate listening to myself. But again, this is why when you're doing video, these tips are going to help you. This is all geared towards confidence building. Okay. Um, you know, the echo environment, be sure that you are not in an area like a bathroom or area that has super high ceilings. And if you are, make sure you're utilizing the mic. Microphone may help, but it still could be pretty drastic. So just be mindful of that. And why is it important to check the video multiple times before sending it out to the internet? There is a million reasons why we should check videos <laughs> before sending them out. Oh, what's the top three? Top three reasons. What do you think? We could have mistimed something that we edited in the video. We could have done something in the video that maybe we should have cut out that we didn't. Um, like I said, keep those real moments. You know, if, if, like I said, I have a massive Connie Corso dog he is as big as I am and sometimes he will walk in my videos and I'll think sorry <laughs> he's just doing his thing things like that are okay but if we're like scrolling through and we're seeing this in our video like clearly we don't want that but there's little things that we may miss we may have said something wrong we may have done a different thing than we wanted to so going back and just looking at the video I know it sucks you don't want to watch yourself but it is so important that we're putting out the content that we want to put out to them and that it's ready and it's good using those editing tools, something may be off timed and it could mess up your whole video based off what you're trying to portray to them. So just rewatch, 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 rewatch until you are like, okay, that's good. Try not to focus on you, listen to it. Listen to how it's being portrayed. Listen to your tonality, listen to all of those things. You don't have to focus on looking on yourself. It's everything else that you wanna make sure is done correctly and what you wanna put out to your clients or your sphere, whoever you're sending it to. Absolutely. How many people in here, and I would love to see, and you can put it in the chat. How many people in here ever watch their videos on mute before they put it out? 
just like seeing how you move your hands, your lips, your eyes. Right. I talk to people, you know, some of us yeah. talk with our hands, some of us are very straight. It all depends on our personality. Absolutely. So I don't think anyone has done that because I don't see anybody in the chat. The reason why I point that out is because write that down. Like watch your video on mute before you send it out just to see. It's very important so you can see. All right. And everything that Liz just said matters. But the do's, what should I be doing? Teasers. Um, just like with Javier, do you know that's, you know, you're grabbing their attention right away. You want to grab it immediately. So doing things like, do you know about this is going to be that teaser that you're looking for to get people engaged with it more. Uh, one of the things that I love when we put this on here is planning out your content and story beforehand. It's very important for you to understand Okay, what do I want to talk about? And this goes right back to who is your target client? Because once you figure out what your who, who your target client is, you now know like what it is. So when you have your target client, the first thing I always have when I'm speaking to agents is what are the problems your target clients are having? And once you figure out what those problems are, you now can make some content solving those problems. So plan out that content, right? People, if you're going up to people who are, you know, selling their second home or in an area in a farm area, you want to show them how to use equity, how to pull out money to debt consolidate or something along those lines. You now have a planned out system. How are you going to convey it? Right. Are you looking to pull money out? Or do you know how to pull money out? Right. So it's different ways to do it, but planning your content, prepare. Preparation is key when you're making videos. So make sure that before you start making a video, write down three major points that you want people to learn with the call of action, of course, at the very end, when you make that video, always put a call to action, contact me for more, click the link below or comment in the chat. Let me know. Okay. Like you're seeing here, we're like, Hey guys, if you're getting some value, put it in the chat. I want to know. So it's very, very, very important. Engaging with the audience. Yes, I did want to touch on something that someone wrote in the chat that I thought was interesting, and I'm sure a lot of people have questions about that. Where do you look? Where, where do you look when you're doing a video? People may find that hard. It's hard not to look at yourself. It really depends on what tools you're using. If you have your phone inside of a ring light, you're really just backed up staring at your phone, so it's not that bad. But if you're sitting in front of your computer like I am, on either side of your webcam, I talked about this in part one, googly eyes, the little gut eyes that shake that you see, put them on each side of it and focus on that. Also, even talking to somebody else out here when you're doing something and you're talking about something, I couldn't give you the exact reason why it works, but it does. People think you're engaging with somebody else and you're like, did you know about the new program available to you? People like that. So you don't even have to stare at the screen. You can also turn and cut off and look somewhere else. It's really just not making sure you're not looking at yourself on the screen is the biggest thing. You can look in other places, you can make movements. It's just making sure you're not watching yourself talk the whole time. You want the attention on the person you're trying to reach. Liz, I'm happy you brought that up because many people don't understand that there are going to be shifts in how people want to see video. And that, what she just described, the look away shot is happening now. OK, literally, I do look away shots all the time and I teach agents how to do it. And the first thing they see is they like, yo, you're not talking to anybody. <laughs> right. And it's like people love watching. We're nosy people like just by default. So we want to look into a conversation rather be spoken to. OK, so when you're watching a video next time you're on social media, watch for that. You're going to see people looking over like they're speaking to somebody. But I want you to now realize that there is no one else there. There is no one. There's a, a wall. Okay. So that look away shot is phenomenal. I love that. Screen jumped on me. Oh, no. That's We're going to go to the you're next engaging slide. With your audience. Yes. You know, when you're talking to somebody else, they think you're engaging with someone. So you're actually engaging with your audience by doing that look away. To so then you have an audience in front of you that you're talking to. So creating little aspects like that within your videos makes it more of an open environment that it's not just a one-on-one. -on -one. You're addressing so many people and you're engaging other people and you're not just focusing on one thing. 
And you can have some fun with that and actually record yourself on the on the receiving end and make that a video. People do that yeah, all the time like with, with green screen. Like, oh my God, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> how do I, then, cause I have a credit card with 22% interest. How do I save money? Well, did you know you can take money out of your house in the form of a HELOC? That's going to be less than this 25 million percent of this credit card. This is why you should work with me. Right. So, again, it's like silly stuff like that. You should be playing around with it. And for those of you watching this in the future, make sure you're writing down a week's worth. And we're going to go deeper into this on part three a week's worth of your content schedule. Know what kind of content you're putting out so you are prepared. Listen, guys, this is not rocket science. This is all preparation and intent. That's it. You have your target audience, you're preparing your content, you went through the formations of getting it down on Canva and on paper, and then boom, you're knocking it out. And don't deviate from it. Keep the same formation going, just change the topics as they change, as the market changes. So, And that goes into creator studios. You're scheduling your time, you're getting it ready, and then you can put it in there and forget it. It's scheduled, it will post when you want it to, so that you can dedicate your time to other things, just time management for ourselves. I know it's super stressful sometimes that we're pulled all over the place. It's rock and roll. I love how we like slow down this this presentation from before because we like sped through it in the first one. And now we're like <laughs> taking <quick>. time. <laughs> yeah, and now we got like five minutes left. So I love it. So we're, we're, we're good. So these are all the top uh, social media platforms right now. Make sure when you're listening to Killing in the Real Estate today, they're going to be talking about TikTok and what the future of TikTok looks like. So make sure you're you're uh, listening in. Some great information on that. Clearly, I already heard it <laughs> because I know. But make sure you guys are going in and listening because they talk about TikTok. And it's very important for you guys to know the future of social media. There are some questions that were in the chat and you may have answered, but I don't know if you want to scroll. Um... We're going to get to the questions at the end because I want to make sure that we go through all the in the entire chat. And since we had a couple more slides left, I wanted to just kind of get through those and then we have a question tab. So I was I was seeing it. I definitely was seeing it. And I apologize for okay, that. We're adjusting. almost up to the whole to questions. Um, yes. So the thing is to ask yourself, what value are you bringing with your content? And yes. again, we'll dive deeper into content next week and really give you some ideas on that. But what value are you bringing? And keep in mind, this is also a confidence booster, a recalibration. If you ever feel discouraged, you're not hitting your goals, you're feeling like you're not who you say you are, imposter syndrome, we all go through it. This is something that is super important for you to always ask yourself, what value do you bring to this transaction? Why are people using you as agents, as an agent, as a realtor, right? And, and you can answer that. Everyone on this call can answer that. But when you answer that, realize, well, I gave my clients creative ways to buy homes. Okay, great. Go and tell people about it. Well, I'm a relationship-based agent. I talk with my clients about all issues. Okay, great. Talk about that. So this is another way, if you do not have a target client audience, this is a way for you to start making content by knocking it out. And property shooting content, I believe, is another one of our agendas for today. So for those of you who wanted to see some videos, this is a sample of one of my videos. And look it, let's go through This was made with Viva Video and iPhone. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay, very simple. House is very unique. I love making videos of gyms. And I say gym with a huge asterisk. Because people want to buy these type of properties due to the fact of availability and also return on investment. I like to give people opportunities. And that's why I love recording houses that may or may not smell horrendous. So that video, real quick, that video, as you can clearly see, was just raw. It was me walking through the house, quick and easy. You can do that now. This video is a paid professional property walkthrough. Let's see the difference. You guys notice the difference immediately?
You can tell the difference, let me know. Got some music in here too. All right, cool. So we can press pause on that. We're pretty much done here. But this is a professional walkthrough using the stabilizer, Adobe Premiere Pro, and an iPhone. You can produce this same type. Now, the jump cut, which is what you were seeing as far as the, the slow and the fast, that's called jump cut. You learn that when you start using cap cut, you will understand. <laughs> That it made me sick. It was moving so fast. That was geared towards a particular type of buyer. Okay. <laughs> so again, this is why it's important to have your target audience identify when you're making content. So the jump cut allows you to make those cool little edits and those cool little movements, but you get what you pay for. But the stabilizer takes away from the walking feel when you're holding your phone. Okay. And I was going to bring my stabilizer up. And it's still in the charger and I cannot use it. Who's speeding? They have tons of them on Amazon. If you just put in phone stabilizer, hundreds of them will pop up and you can find one that works for you. But they're a phenomenal tool to use. It takes that bouncing that you get with a regular phone just in your hand away. And when your clients see something like this, they go, wow, this agent really knows how to market my property. And makes you, again, back to the first part, makes you stand out among other people. Correct. And you can use this in a listing presentation. You can also use this just showing what you do if you speak to a for sale by owner or anybody for that matter. So you can go right ahead and let them see what your abilities are. All right. Questions. So you can unmute yourselves if you have some questions and we can take anybody for the next few minutes, I guess. Yes. Yes. yes that's uh, what Yes. Uh, you said you made that one with uh, just your iPhone, your first one you made, the walkthrough? Yes. Yep. Okay. Vivid video, you said? Viva. Viva, Viva video. Okay. Is that an app or is that just part of the phone? Is that something in there? No. So that's an app. You go to your app store, look up Viva video, and you will see it. It's just like it has like a V. Um, it's like orange icon. You will see it. But my recommendation, as I stated before, will be CapCut because it allows you to do the dynamic captions. Viva Video is really cool because it's virtually the same thing as CapCut. I discovered CapCut after Viva Video, so that's why I'm more towards CapCut now. But Viva Video is good for beginners. So if you're just starting out, I think that's a really good start so you can play around with uh, making some videography. I mean, right. some content for your videos. All right, someone asked, does the hashtag only work on Instagram? No, it works across all platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You can use them in YouTube in your description area. They work across the board. You want to use them across the board. Now, but we got to be careful, though, because it's not they don't communicate with each other. These hashtags right. don't work throughout the entire. But every single one of these social media platforms look and use um, hashtags. So just really keep in mind that the more micro your hashtag is, the better. They're okay. And when you are doing hashtag, we have a strategy that's called hashtag stacking. And basically you want to look at hashtags like pools. Okay. You want to start with a smaller pool. You want to go with a medium, large and extra large. What that means is this hashtag may only have a hundred posts, 5,000 posts, 200,000 posts, a million posts. And you want to utilize that because you can now start to dominate slowly. It may take you like four or five months to dominate the 5,000 post hashtag. And it may take you a year to dominate the million um, post hashtag. And what I mean by dominate, all that means is you go right into that hashtag and then there's a top and there's recent, okay? So recent shows you everyone that's using it. Top shows you the most um, exposed, the more viral, the the algorithm is going to showcase whatever they want to showcase. Remember, all of this is all about the algorithm when we're talking hashtags. So with TikTok, you want to use the recently used ones. That's going to help you pop up on people's For You page. 
um, more prevalently. So when you're seeing that and you see top use, that's what's trending right now. That's what everyone's using to get on everyone's feed. So it depends on what platforms that you're, you're using. So keep that in mind. Correct. Selfie sticks and tripods, definitely. Selfie sticks are not my favorite due to the fact that it really depends on what you're shooting. Stabilizers, remember guys, if you haven't shot video or you have a problem with getting on video, taking your phone into a property like we spoke about last week um, is very important. And the stabilizer allows you to just hold it, walk and knock it out and get it done. The, the tripods allows you to take the photography. Recording video with the tripod is cool. You can set your phone up, turn the video on, get in front of it, shoot your content. You can also do this in front of neighborhood signs. If you're trying to dominate like Maple Glen, the, you know, the neighborhood, I don't even know that's a real neighborhood, but if you're trying to dominate that neighborhood, take your tripod, set it up, put it in front of that sign in that, in that neighborhood, stand in front of that tripod and say, hey, I'm Javier with XYZ Brokerage. I'm right in front of Maple Glen. I just want to give you guys some market data. Last year, we sold about XYZ properties. It increased value about this percentage. If you're looking to learn more about your home, contact me today. So again, we may have people on the call who want to dominate neighborhoods. This is how you do it, okay? If you have a partner or someone from your brokerage that's willing to go with you, walk the streets and make video. Hey, I'm right now in Maple Glen. This neighborhood has a whopping median sales price of 1.5 million. That's up 49% from last year, which is which means that there are many people right now that have equity. They could tap into that equity. Here are three ways you can use it. And then three ways pop up. And then you're walking while doing this. People are seeing you. You look cool. You become the expert over time. And you're starting to dominate a neighborhood because you are boots on the ground. Uh, anybody else? Is this course uh, geared to cell phone video? Yes, everything that we're doing here is for cell phone video. I do not recommend using anything other than your cell phone. Okay, if you go into a higher end gear, reach out to a uh, person who does videos for a living uh, because they're gonna showcase to you the cell phone is what they use. So if they're using it, we're using it and your phone is 4K anyway. Um, the four questions is, did you know all right, that's the first one. Did you know? Another one I use is I use you. I use this the word you should or you need to or you know something along those lines, right? Also, you can use have you heard? Breaking news. Things of that nature. I I really wouldn't need more information. Uh, to give you some better questions, because my questions just come from the topic, the, the the actual topic I'm using for that moment. So I would just need to know the topics and I can kind of help you with that. But I'm going to put my email in the chat. If you guys have any questions, and Liz, I'm sure you're going to put hers. If you have any questions, remember, guys, we are all a part of the same association, Bucks County Association of Realtors. We're here to help one another. We're not competition. We may be in the same markets, but that doesn't mean anything. OK, I want you guys to truly be able to take what we have given you here today and use it. Double down on it. It's free. That's what makes B-Car awesome. Shout out to the big B-Car, by the way. <laughs> I think we have about like 4,200 <clears throat> members or 4,300 members right now. So we're pretty strong. One of the best associations on the planet. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Seriously, we do a lot. And listen, one thing that you must understand about anything you're getting from anybody is check what they're doing, right? See what they're doing. The stuff that me and Liz have been giving you and we will continue to give you, we do. This is nothing that we're saying, hey, do this and we're not ever doing it. No, right? I'm going to put my um, uh, handle in the chat. So you guys can go to my Instagram page and verify. Remember, assume nothing, verify everything is very important, especially since we're realtors. Yeah, and make sure, let's go to the last slide, Liz. We got to make sure they pumped up. They pumped up for this uh, part three. Part three is where it gets crazy. 
Like, if you thought this was crazy, part three is going to literally map out the content you need. So those questions of what uh, are the questions you're using to grab attention, we're going to literally walk you through the content that matters. And remember, everybody is already doing video. They are it's like white noise at this point. We need to disrupt that with something of value. And we're going to talk to you about what that value looks like. So you can yeah, hit the ground running. We want you guys to stand out. Like we talked about in the very first one, we're going to give you everything you need of different content ideas that you can end this series and go for months with content that you can use. So please make sure you register for part three because we're super excited to share everything else we have for you guys with you. <laughs> I'm pumped up. Let's Can we get the part three in the chat for the registration for those of you who are interested? I'm excited. Who's excited for part three? I've been promoting this on my personal channels. People have been watching. This is on YouTube too, by the way. This is going out to the world. Making a difference here in Bucks County. Any other questions? Well, as you saw, Javier and I both put our email addresses in there. So even after this series ends or in the interim, if you guys do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's why we're here. We're available if you need us. 100%. Just, uh, put part three in. And yes. um, sounds like a lot of you are registered, but um, just make sure you're registered. And um, we do take registrations up till that morning. I think people were registering at like 1130 today for today's class. So, um, and there's no limit on the number of registrations. So um, thank you again, Javier and Liz for another uh, really informative program. Um, you will, everyone will receive a copy of this recording along with this presentation uh, later today or, or tomorrow. And then it's also up on our website. Um, under member benefits, it's under education uh, series. Um, and, uh, you know, there's probably about 35 videos up there that we've done over the last uh, two years. So um, this has been fantastic. Um, please let us know if you have any further questions and um, we'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah, Thanks one last thing here. though, I wanna, I wanna make sure you guys remember this, try to bring somebody from your brokerage into this. Because if you can have a partner who's just as excited as you are of making video, this is going to make it a lot easier. So just like copy the link and put it into your brokerage Facebook group or uh, your, you know, your, your, you know, your meeting, whatever the case may be, give it to your brokerage. Bring somebody over or somebody who you know that's not on your bro, that's not in your brokerage that can come and join as well and help you out. So just a little Jim. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank